Whether managing a gun-running empire, relaxing in your tricked-out penthouse, or taking down rival gangs with your motorcycle club, Grand Theft Auto Online has tons of stuff to do. GTA Online has more than lived up to its promise of expanding GTA's criminal underworld into a totally interactive playground for mayhem. And with their latest Diamond Casino expansion, players can ditch the gritty streets and join the high rollers. There's plenty more, so today we're going to plow through 107 facts about Grand Theft Auto Online. Number 1. On December 12, 2019, Christmas came early for the GTA Online fans. Rockstar dropped a literal game changer, the Diamond Casino Heist update. This mission has two to four players breaking into the Unbreakable, a casino vault, for a massive payoff. Number 2. The casino job offers more choice than previous heists. Some prep missions are optional, though skipping them can cause new problems down the road. And once players scope things out, they can choose to break in silent and sneaky, play the big con by faking their way in, or go aggressive, which is exactly what it sounds like. Number 3. Most interestingly, the flexibility of the situations means if things go south, the mission's not over. An expected stealth job could go guns blazing in a heartbeat, and players will have to scramble on the fly to fix the situation and get back on track. Number 4. For GTA 4 fans who want a familiar face on their team, there's a secret mission to find and recruit seasoned bank robber Packy McReary. Wait for a blue dot on the minimap, chase and kill the cop driving the van, free Patrick and get him back to the safe house. Number 5. Even before you get to the casino, there's plenty of games to choose from. This heist's required front is an arcade, where players can pick from 12 different playable games, including the latest installment of GTA San Andreas' Go Go Space Monkey, Space Monkey 3 Bananas Gone Bad. Number 6. There's also a Red Dead Redemption nod with the Nazar Speaks fortune telling machine, appropriate since half her fortunes reference Red Dead characters and locations. Along alongside GTAO in jokes like the car duplication glitch. Number 7. Three fortunes in particular connect the two Rockstar worlds more closely. They reveal a set of numbers identical to those repeated by the woman trapped in the bog at Braithwaite's Manor in Red Dead Redemption 2. Number 8. Not only that, but if you call the number in GTAO, Madame Nazar teases you with two vague messages that have fans wondering if it's a Rockstar teaser for GTA 6 or just points the way to deeper mysteries in GTAO. Number 9. To get in on this new heist, you have to be a CEO in a VIP organization or part of a motorcycle club. All high-level operations require serious management. That's why the best feature in this update might be the master control terminal that comes with the arcade. When you use use a certain Pixel Emporium laptop, you can manage your entire crime syndicate from one handy panel. Number 10. One thing you won't have to steal is music. Diamond Heist dropped a new radio station, iFruit, on Los Santos, hosted and curated by rappers Danny Brown and Skepta. The name's a knock on Apple and iTunes, if you couldn't tell, and iFruit's corporate power is so major it doesn't have or need in-game commercials. Number 11. The heist completes the larger expansion of the Diamond Casino and Resort up Update, revamping a long dead area of GTAO. Vinewood Casino was opening soon since the dawn of GTA Online back in 2013, with the building locked and useless to players. That is, until June 6, 2019, when the banner came down and the construction materials appeared outside. Number 12. On June 20th, construction increased and Rockstar officially announced the now renamed Diamond Casino and Resort would soon be open for business. Number 13. VIP service jumped to a whole new level of luxury on July 23rd when the resort finally opened and GTAO players got the game's biggest content update in two years. Number 14. With 22 new cars, 500 new outfits, 7 new survival maps, and a new King of the Hill game mode where players fight to hold 3 zones, you might forget there was, you know, an actual casino to play games in. Number 15. Since you can't pull weapons inside the casino, why not get a drink? In fact, if you get plastered specifically on Macbeth Whiskey after setting yourself up with a pen house and story mission, you'll unlock a secret timed truck driving mission and collect a cool $6,500. Number 16. If you're not a drinker, you can sit down and play three card poker, roulette, or blackjack, bet at the racetrack, or spin the lucky wheel. Number 17. You can also play slots on machines featuring classic GTA franchises like the Twilight Knife Slasher films, Impotent Rage, Republican Space Rangers, GTA Vice City Stories, Angel in the Night, and The Evacuator, and GTA 5's reality show show, fame or shame. Number 18. 55 countries banned the in-game casino games because they were considered to be online gambling. Players in these countries can still walk into the casino, but just can't buy chips. 
Number 19. Rockstar requires players to be 18 or older to enter the casino, limits the number of chips players can buy in an hour, and although you can buy chips with real-world cash, chips can only be used for in-game purchases. Number 20. Even if you can't play the casino games, players can still buy a penthouse and enroll in the Diamond VIP program, getting perks like limousines, bottle service, helicopter rides, and access to high roller tables. Number 21. And if you really want to roll big, you can expand your penthouse with a 10-car garage, extra bedroom, and lounge area. Number 22. The last room lets you add even more ridiculousness, including your own personal casino dealer, an office with a safe and gun storage, a spa, a media room, and a bar and party hub. And that's before you start decorating with modern art. Who doesn't want their own yellow dog with cone? Number 23. Pay attention to the casino's art as well. Rockstar added a nod to Bully on the Walls with a mod drawing of the school's crests. Overeager fans interpreted the pink dots and gold dashes as a teaser for a Bully 2 in Morse code. They spell out D-A-N-4, or 4-N-A-D. I mean, Dan Hauser is Rockstar's co-founder and was a lead writer for the first Bully, but this seems like a stretch. Number 24. You can actually use your media room as well. Besides being able to watch TV, if there's two or more additional players hanging around, you can all play Don't Cross the Line, a vintage arcade version of Snake. Number 25. The Diamond program has four tiers, Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Players can work their way up the tiers by completing work assignments, earning fat stacks of cash, and sweet extras like posters, tattoos, and limited edition whips. Number 26. For a brief moment, players could even transcend their human form. For 2019's Halloween surprise, players could find and chomp down a peyote plant scattered around Los Santos to turn into cougars, deer, killer whales and a whole slew of land and sea creatures. Number 27. If players found the right specific plant, they could even turn it into Franklin Clinton's dog Chop, or the classic cryptozoid Bigfoot. Number 28. Diamond Heist is a nice change of pace for GTAO players to enjoy the glitz and glamour of casinos as customers, but in the After Hours update, players created and maintained the hottest clubs in town to bring customers in. Number 29. The update dropped on July 24th, 2018 and included a warehouse where players could organize and expand their entire criminal network from just one space. Number 30. Sound systems, lighting, dancers, DJs, bartenders, bouncers, and paint jobs. The After Hours update literally had players run a successful business operation, which was the best cover for shadier stuff like fake IDs, drugs, and weapons distribution. Number 31. That sounds like a lot to handle, but don't worry. You've got the help of nightlife pros and GTA stalwarts, Gay Tony, and DJ Laszlo Jones to help you. Number 32. What would a club be without music? The update dropped Los Santos Underground Radio on July 31st, 2018. As the largest GTAO radio station, it features a total of 65 acid, disco, deep house, and synth pop songs. Number 33. Rockstar even went one step further. IRL DJs The Black Madonna, Solomon, Tale of Us, and Dixon were all motion captured for the game and created special mixes just for this update. You can recruit them for your club by completing each of their own special missions. Number 30. 34. After Hours featured a hidden weapon tie-in to promote Red Dead Redemption 2, the stone hatchet. You can unlock it by completing the bounty target mission. The hatchet's just a normal melee weapon, but it does trigger a rampage mode that renders the player invincible for a few seconds. And you can extend the rampage mode by getting more kills while you're invincible. Number 35. All work and no play would make After Hours a pretty dull game. Good thing the vehicles available in this update were some of GTA's wildest yet. Limps, attack airplanes, and even the controversial Oppressor Mark II, a hoverbike version of the already impressive Oppressor, made After Hours' unofficial motto, Death From Above. Number 36. Now the Class A Scramjet race car came out on August 21st, 2018 for Scramjet Week and was based on Speed Racer's classic Mach 5. Number 37. There was even a return of a classic Grand Theft Auto San Andreas's Enris Stafford based on the Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud was available once again. Number 38. One of the Easter eggs requires you to get blackout drunk. In game, that is. We don't condone excessive drinking in real life. Once again, Macbeth's whiskey to blame. One shot and players get knocked out and wake up in random spots all over the map. Basically, keep drinking until you find yourself on top of the Epsilon building wearing a Kiflam t-shirt. Welcome to the religious cult of Epsilon. Number 39. Then again, if you really want to go all in, head into any nightclub and tip the attendant generously. Like 575 times generously. The messages you'll get while tipping tie into the Epsilon cult missions from GTA 5, and eventually you'll have yourself a handsome set of cult robes. 
number 40. While we're on Epsiloms, by the way, the first time you die in GTA O, Epsilom founder and cult leader Chris Fromage appears. He breaks the fourth wall, confirms his divinity, and oh yeah, explains how to access and use passive mode, where the player can't kill or be killed in free mode. Number 41. Well, environmental hazard damage can still hurt you in passive mode, and you can engage the mode if you have a bounty on your head or are a CEO, VIP, or MC leader. Number 42. These kind of supernatural shenanigans are old hat the GTA O players who survived 2017's massive Doomsday Heist update. On December 12, 2017, billionaire, entrepreneur, and thinly veiled Elon Musk stand-in, Avon Hertz roped players into saving not only Los Santos, but all life on Earth. Number 43. Players can use ridiculous super weapons like the Orbital Cannon, an ultimate griefing weapon capable of zapping targeted players with a blue death beam anywhere in Los Santos. For $500,000, you can do it manually, but for $750,000, it will automatically aim itself. The cannon requires a full in game day of about 48 minutes to cool down and use again. Number 44. Unfortunately for non targeted players, if you're in the Orbital Cannon's blast zone, you're also toast. Players are only safe in personal spots like apartments, offices, and bunkers. That last one making a lot more sense than the other two. Number 45. The Stromberg Submersible is a direct James Bond reference, named after the villain in The Spy Who Loved Me. It's modeled after Bond's own submersible vehicle, the 1976 Lotus Esprit. Number 46. There's also the Deluxo, a DeLorean-based car first seen in GTA Vice City. In Doomsday, it goes full-on back to the future, with retracting wheel hovercraft mode and full-on flying abilities. Number 47. Doomsday also gave GTA Online its first specially created radio station, Blonded Los Santos, curated by artist Frank Ocean and based on his Beats One show, Blonded Radio. Number 48. For all the futurism, there was also an old-fashioned treasure hunt. An email from Vandaline at iFinder.com gave players a clue to find a special item. Eventually, players could track down a golden dual-action pistol that would also be unlocked for them in the then-upcoming Red Dead Redemption 2. Number 49. Doomsday was the first heist that only required two players instead of the usual four. The fewer players, the bigger the take. Number 50. Just setting up for Doomsday could have you running into more than the cops. Out of nine sprawling facilities operated by the Shady International Affairs Agency, Mount Gordo is the only one that specifically states it's not haunted. So of course, it's haunted. Number 51. If players head to the top of the mountain between 11 p.m. and midnight, they'll spot a ghostly woman in the words Jock, written in blood on a nearby rock. That's Jolene Cranley Evans, her husband, Jock Cranley, pushed her off the cliff back in 1978. Jock was found not guilty of her murder and is now a local politician running for office, but his wife's spirit won't let the people of Los Santos forget his crimes. Number 52. The entire 2017 season was all about paranoia, massive weapons, and military-grade vehicles. August 29th Smuggler's Run opened up the skies of San Andreas State to 14 added aircraft. There were also new hangars to put them in. Number 53, and if you needed ground transport, there's the Batmobile. Okay, it's actually the Grody Vigilante, but it sure looks like the Batmobile, and it's also the only weaponized vehicle added in that update. Number 54, June 13th's gun running heist focused on guns more than goods, with players becoming arms dealers all over San Andreas. Covert operator Agent 14 introduced players to the all new bunkers that the update added. Number 55, now GTA Online originally took place when it came out in 2013, a few weeks before the events of GTA 5. But gun running has Agent 14 specifically say GTA O takes place in 2017 now. Number 56. Dragging the game four years forward makes for a lot of oddities, including characters that died back in 2013 still walking around online in 2017. There's even still ads for an election that happened four years ago. Number 57. It also basically declared one of GTA 5's endings non-canon. In the world of GTA Online, Trevor is officially alive and doing well, and doing yoga. Sorry if you chose to shoot him as Franklin, that was the wrong choice apparently. Number 58. Rockstar officially confirmed GTA games exist in three different universes, so a lot of this could probably be waved away with an easy multiverse timeline answer. Shameless plug time, we've covered the 3D and HD universes in our timeline videos, so you should go take a look at those after this video. And if you already have, thank you. We love you. I love you.
I love you so much. Number 59. If you don't want to settle down in one place, the new mobile operations centers kept businesses literally moving and opened up a series of eight missions, taking the action on the road. Number 60. The gun running update also added the weapons workshop. With some research, players could weaponize vehicles or update existing weapons to Mark II status. A little knowledge can really be a dangerous thing. Number 61. Gun running was more down to earth than Doomsday. Players got 10 weaponized land vehicles for serious road damage, including the De Class A Tampa. It's just a regular GTA Tampa, but with a minigun on top. Number 62. The update did still have some X-Files Easter eggs weirdness. If players complete at least 600 resupplies and start a new run between the hours of 9 and 11 p.m., they might get a special job involving a crashed UFO, alien egg, and some very big green men. Number 63. This all ties back into GTA 5's ongoing UFO conspiracy. There's Mount Shiliad's strange gifts, Michael's alien hallucinations, hallucinations, and a whole host of other clues that has tons of GTA 5 players convinced that the truth is still out there. Number 64. Rockstar doesn't have a separate team running GTA O. Instead, there's focused team members working on it and other Rockstar projects simultaneously. That explains all the crossover, but also makes for a more coherent universe and faster adaptation of what's working best in each game. Number 65. Director of Design Imran Sawar said the special cargo network missions in June 7, 2016's further adventures in finance and felony changed the way Rockstar developed GTAO moving forward. Players were much more enthusiastic about running and operating a large crime syndicate, so they dynamic shifted more towards co-op than PvP. Number 66. Further Adventures also dropped a new adversary mode where players switch between losers and VIPs as they kill or get killed, called Trading Places. It's based on the 1983 Eddie Murphy Dan Aykroyd movie of the same name, where a spoiled Wall Street blue blood and a homeless man swap lives. Number 67. Another movie-inspired adversary mode was Deadline. You could play a 3D version of Don't Cross the Line on a Nagasaki Shoujiro. The Shoujiro is clearly based on the Tron Legacy's light cycle, but avoids those pesky licensing fees from Disney. Number 68. 2017's Cunning Stunts Special Vehicle Circuit and 2016's Cunning Stunts Update put GTA Online's vehicles at the forefront for players. The 20 new races were designed to showcase what GTA special vehicles could really do. Number 69. But the real fun came weeks later on August 2nd, 2017. The new stunt creator let players build their own stunt races using over 250 continuously updated props. Number 70. GTA Online's original content creator has been available since GTA O's inception and continually updated. Some fan-created races even became Rockstar verified and accessible to all players outside racing mode on the free roam map. Number 71. It doesn't look like they've verified anything recently, but that hasn't kept fans from building and creating some tracks that really put GTA's cars through the paces. Number 72. There's more to racing than just putting your foot on the gas. Racers can actually use slipstreaming and drafting by taking advantage of airflow behind another vehicle to slingshot ahead. It's an intended and encouraged practice, but mentioned curb boosting and GTA message boards are likely to devolve into shouting matches. Number 73. See, GTA cards can get a fractional speed boost simply by driving on and off a curb repeatedly. Some theorize it's the game's engine revving mechanics, and others think it's the lack of road friction. No one knows exactly why it works, but it does. The racers can shave off precious seconds using it. Number 74. The curb boosting glitch, or feature, depending on how you view it, has been around since 2014 and doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Number 75. Rockstar's sticking with vehicular mayhem, as 2019's December 11 Arena Awards update is entirely set inside GTA own Thunderdome, the Maze Bank Arena. Number 76, players literally ride or die as they duke it out in eight different minigame style car matches, and if players don't like the 12 new ludicrous arena contender vehicles, they can even buy a workshop and build their own. Number 77, it's a tighter focus than usual for the wide world of GTA, and they might not be a coincidence. Arena War came out right after Red Dead Online dropped, and Imran Sawar hoped they'd have players splitting time between two incredible worlds. A zany, wildly different form of multiplayer action might convince them to do so. Number 78. Oddly enough, GTA Online started in 2019 with a ray gun, the up anatomizer from the in-world franchise Republican Space Rangers. This out-of-this-world weapon 
doesn't require ammo, and somehow doesn't seem out of place on the streets of Los Santos. Number 79. The Up and Atomizer feels like a gentler cousin of the Arena Wars alien equivalent Unholy Hellbringer, a plasma gun also used by Republican Space Rangers, particularly Butch and Dick. Number 80. In May 2017, GTA 5 passed the 80 million sales mark, an achievement surpassed only by Minecraft, Tetris, and Wii Sports. That's about equal to the total combined sales for the entire past generation and a half of GTA games. GTA 3, GTA Vice City, GTA San Andreas, and GTA 4. Five's key difference being GTA Online. Number 81. Given its massive success, Grand Theft Auto Online had a rough start. It launched October 1st, 2013 for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, two weeks after the release of the base single-player game, Grand Theft Auto V. Number 82. The online story was initially a prequel set a few weeks before 5, but like I mentioned, later updates shifted it four years ahead. Number 83. To say the launch didn't go well would be a massive understatement. Server trouble, bugs, problems, logging in, and connection issues plagued the game from day one. Number 84. And those were the lighter issues. Some players even ended up losing characters, ranks, items, apartments, and in-game money. Number 85. The problem got so bad just one day after GTA O's release, Rockstar had to disable the microtransaction system entirely. Number 86. To lure back players who'd been burned, on October 11th, 2013, Rockstar announced a special stimulus package for anyone playing GTA Online that month. Half a million in-game dollars deposited in two waves on players' accounts. Number 87. Thing is, that was just half of the announcement. The other half of the announcement informed players that any missing characters, ranks, or cash were officially gone for good. Yikes. I hope that the 500 grand helped soften that blow. Number 88. Still, Rockstar kept tripping up. In December 2013, they raised player expectations, announcing forthcoming DLC content for GTA 5 that would expand single player and create new story content for GTA 5's main characters. Number 89. And yet, in 2015, Imran Sawar said downloadable content for GTA 5 was looking very unlikely, and saying, right now our focus is on GTA Online. By then, GTA Online had become successful enough to invest time into. Number 90. The first eight to nine months were looking bleak. The player base was rapidly declining, the morale of the Rockstar employees was sinking lower and lower, up to the middle of 2014. GTAO was on the verge of failing. Number 91. The High Life update was supposed to be released April 22nd, 2014, but was delayed until May 13th due to all of the exploit patches Rockstar had to put up. That was the first and so far only DLC delay GTA Online's ever had. Number 92. When High Life finally dropped, it came with a brand new game changing mechanic, Mental State. Aggro actions like killing other players or hurting civilians will raise your mental state to one of five levels, noted by different shades of red. Doing jobs lowers you back down to white, and the redder you are, the more rep points and less mental damage other players get for killing you. Basically, committing crimes puts a bounty on your head. Number 93. 2015's Halloween surprise added a new adversary mode, Slasher. What was meant as a one-off became a returning terror. Two to eight players become Slasher and Hunted, and three minutes in, the tables turn and the Hunted get their own shotguns to take down their stalker. Number 94. Halloween surprise made a game out of it, but GTA Online had a Slasher before that. In 2014, GTAO players found themselves stalked and killed by a real in-game serial killer named Mr. Creepy Koala. For a few months, this player made videos of himself stalking and killing other GTAO players Michael Myers style. His victims were not so amused. Number 95. When ill-gotten games dropped on June 1st, 2015, GTA Online still seemed in trouble. The system continued to glitch due to player overload and new anti-hacking scripts that Rockstar patched in. Number 96. But Rockstar Rockstar had already righted the course by fixing and dropping heist gameplay in time for the PS4 and Xbox One launches in 2015, steadily increasing their player base. Number 97. With heists on the field, players got a new level of multiplayer interactivity, variety, and gameplay flexibility, with four players, or two for the Fleeka job, working together to commit crimes. Number 98. Adversary mode was first introduced in the heist update, with other modes being introduced as time went on. Number 99. Hasta La Vista in particular was based on the 
the truck, bike, motorcycle chase from Terminator 2. Players get divided into teams of truckers and cyclists and race down a spillway. Number 100. Things were looking up, but Rockstar was still getting their act together. The heists launched on March 10th, 2015, but PC players had to wait until April 14th for GTA's launch on that platform. Number 101. Rockstar publicly apologized and offered $200,000 in-game to any PC players who'd pre-ordered it. Number 102. PC players also got exclusive access to the then new station, The Lab, hosted by Ono oh and The Alchemist, who also created the soundtrack for GTA 5. Number 103. When Ill-Gotten Gains 2 dropped on July 8th, The Lab became available for every other system, including Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PlayStation 3 and 4. Number 104. Looking to the future also means leaving the past behind. In September 2015, Rockstar officially announced there wouldn't be any further updates for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions of the game, as the older systems couldn't handle the new material. Number 105. One unexpected development Rockstar didn't predict was players using GTA Online as a life simulator, though they are aware of it and find it fascinating. GTA RP, or Grand Theft Auto role-playing, has taken on a life of its own, with players performing deep criminal investigations in character. Number 106. So what's the future hold for GTA Online? Co-studio head of Rockstar North, Rob Nelson, says the team tries to plan what's happening about a year in advance, but no further, to give them flexibility to respond to any changes on the fly. Number 107. The Diamond Casino and Resort update broke Rockstar's records for the biggest single day and week in player numbers since GTA O first launched in 2013, meaning there's probably at least six more years of mayhem ahead. And if you want another 107 facts about your favorite video games, subscribe to the leaderboard. We're 1 million players and counting. I'm your host, Kyle. Thanks for watching.